Let's stay with President Trump here and stay in Vegas. Dana White, one of my favorite guys. Little interesting interview here with Brian Kilmeade. He said Trump is the best fighter of all time. The one thing about the former president, he wants to be the next president again. You know a fighter's heart. You stare in more fighters' eyes than anybody else to see what's in there. Where does he rank at 77? Number one. Number one. You take any of the greatest fighters of all time, Trump is number one. The most resilient human being that I have ever met in my life. In what respect? Why keep doing this? You yeah. know, you've got money. You've got a great life. you got whatever. Why keep doing this? And the one thing that I can tell you, and this is a fact, this guy loves this country, right? And he loves all Americans, regardless of what color, religion, or whatever it is. He is not a racist. He's a good human being, and he loves America, and he cares about this country. Period. End of story. If he wasn't that type of guy, I would never even associate myself with him. Right. Let's bring in my Florida Congressman, Greg Stubbe, who is here to discuss tomorrow's annual congressional baseball game. But first, sir, I would love to get your reaction on Dana White in that clip there regarding President Trump is the greatest fighter of all time. Well, he is. Look at all the things that the Democrats have thrown at him. Look at all the prosecutions that has been thrown at him. Look at the money that he's had to spend defending himself. There's nobody else in our country that would be able to withstand the things that he's withstood. And we all know the Russia gate and Russia collusion hoax. Uh, that's all been debunked now. And uh, he had to deal with that for years in the beginning of his presidency. So there, there really isn't anybody that's a tougher fighter. I've been with him uh, uh, days on end. Uh, we went to Iowa campaigning together. I was with him all day. And he has a level of energy that I do not have. Uh, it's amazing how he just continues to fight and he's took it as a mantle now that there's nobody else that can fight that doesn't have the resources like he does uh, and the energy like he does to fight for the American people and fight for the America First agenda. Yeah, Congressman, it's Scott Martin. Thanks for joining us today and, and thanks for all your service, of course, and everything. And I'm glad you're feeling better from uh, some of the things over the last year or so, the accident on the ladder and things like that, which I'd love to talk about because I fell off a ladder, by the way, about six months ago. So we've got that kind of in common, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> Resources. Speaking of, of fire and fight, how about men uh, competing in USA Olympic sports as far as women's sports, amateur sports, things like that? You and uh, Tommy Tuberville had introduced some legislation on banning that that practice or that activity. Could you give us an update on where that is and how that stands? Yeah, we, we were able to protect the Women's and Girls in Sports Act early last year that passed the House. What was shocking was not a single Democrat voted for that bill that simply says that we want to keep women's sports, women's sports. Congress in the 70s created Title IX specifically to give women their own avenue to be able to play on their own playing field. Uh, so the fact that, that every single Democrat thinks that we should have biological men competing in women's sports, not just at the high school level, at the college level, competing for scholarships. I mean, we, we've all seen the Riley Gaines, Leah Thomas thing. We've all seen this, you know, in the, in the beginning, about five years ago, the Democrats would say, oh, this never happens. And now just about every time you turn on the TV or read something in a sports uh, blog or something, you see that this is happening in wrestling. You see that this is happening now in boxing. Well, USA Boxing gets their authority through the Olympics through Congress. So what we're going to work on, we passed we passed the women's and girls sports bill uh, last year. Of course, the Senate's not going to take it up because it's run by Chuck Schumer and the Democrats. Uh, but we passed another bill after USA Boxing came out with a policy that allows biological men to compete with women in boxing. I mean, it, you, you, you talk about some of these other sports and you can may, maybe make an argument. I don't think you can, but maybe make an argument. But boxing, we're going to allow biological men to box uh, uh, females in Olympics boxing. So we filed a bill. Uh, it passed through committee on a party line vote. It should be set up for the floor probably in the next month or so. And then it'll go to the Senate. And I'm sure Tupperville will bring it up for a vote, but they'll kill it over there. Uh, because the, the Democrats have the majority over there. But this is like a 75, 80 percent issue. If you talk to even Democratic moms, they don't want biological men in their daughter's locker rooms in middle school or in high school for volleyball or you name it. It's not just a safety thing. It's all the other things that come along with it. It absolutely is, Congressman. Uh, let's get into the annual congressional baseball game. I know you're pretty hyped up for this one. I saw your tweet earlier, and all I have to say is, as one of your constituents, you're going to have my vote after this. Well, thank you. Yeah, it's it's actually one of the fun things that we get to do in Washington every single year. And uh, the, the Republicans take it very seriously. 
We practice. We're at practice at 5.45 a.m. on the days we're in D.C. Um, we're ready to go. I've been ready to go. So I'll be starting on the mound pitching for the Republicans. And if the Democrats will throw to me this time, maybe I'll hit another one out of the park. Last year, they walked me three times. And I've been giving the Democratic pitchers a hard time. Like, guys, it's a charity game that's played once a year. Just throw me strikes. Anything near the strike zone. And uh, I would appreciate that. Last year, they were thrown in the dirt and over my head and walked me three times. So we'll see if they do that or not. Yeah, Congressman, the, the money line, by the way, on the Republicans is minus 600. I'm still going to take it because you're on the team. Is there any chance? I mean, I hear Angel Hernandez is not going to be officiating the game and Joe West is not either. That gives me some some promise. <laughs> but furthermore, is there any chance we could get AOC or Elizabeth Warren up at the plate? Uh, for you to throw maybe a fastball, maybe kind of close, maybe high and tight, maybe give a couple of them some chin music too while we're at it. Well, that would be certainly interesting. She's never played. Um, obviously, Elizabeth Warren has never played. They do have uh, some women that have played in the past. Liz San Alinda Sanchez is now their manager. She used to hit a couple of times. And then Nanette uh, uh, Berenger, I think, Berrigan. is her last. Yes. Berenger, Berrigan. yes. Um, she played not last year, but the year before. So, the, if if we get ahead enough, they'll they'll bring them in to hit, but they didn't last year. So we'll see. Uh, we have a few people on our side, some women that are willing to get up there and hit. Joni Ernst out of Iowa, Senator out of Iowa. She actually can hit the ball pretty well. So I've been kind of nudging the coach if we get ahead enough to get, let her get in at bat. Uh, Kat Kamek likes to run the bases and run over Democrats at home plate. You can just look up that video. That's a pretty famous video of her running full speed into the Democratic catcher. So we we have some some women on our side that like to play as well. I love Excellent. that. I I would definitely play if I was in Congress. Uh, we saw in that last video your home run from 2021. That was the first out of the park home run in the congressional baseball game in almost 40 years. Before we started the show, you hopped on early. Uh, I was just kind of casually going back and forth, and you're saying I've already been pitching. I've had batting practice. Get into kind of how you've been prepping for this. Yeah, so the Republicans will start practice like four months out, the days, the mornings that we're in D.C. And then because I pitch and I'm 46, I can't just like walk up and throw 120 pitches on the mound. I have to kind of like grade up and get prepared. So I'll I'll work out with the Sarasota High School baseball team. I practice up in D.C. and then I have a pitching batting cage here uh, on my property so I can get up to that. Last week we had a scrimmage. Uh, against uh, uh, former MLB guys and over 50 league. And um, I threw 75 on the mound, probably 20 in the bullpen before that. But you definitely have to get your, I'm not 20 something anymore. You definitely have to get your arm prepared for throwing. Last year, I only threw 65 in three quarter innings. Um, but there, my very first year I pitched, I threw 142 off the mound. So your body wants to, it feels like you got hit by a train. So you definitely have to prepare for that. But I'm ready to go. Yeah. Uh, so I'd encourage everybody, all, everybody that's listening and watching uh, Fox Sports 1 uh, Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Congressman, those are Mike Scott type numbers back in the Astro days when he used to throw 132 pitches in about 10 innings. They, they would extend him into the extra innings. And something, too, I mean, based on those stats, I'm in Chicago. We need a, we need you maybe for the Chicago White Sox, too, up here because of the fact that they don't have anybody that's willing to play as hard as it seems like you are for the Republicans. Any chance we can bring back? The old school Florida Marlins, the old teal with the big F and the fish on the hat back in the day, because now the Miami Marlins, man, I'll tell you, not that interesting as far as colors and scheme. Yeah, bring it back. I think it looks good. Um, yeah, I would. In, after I hit the home run, there was a lot of talk amongst uh, Fox and, and ESPN that uh, maybe some major leagues were going to reach out to a member of Congress, see if you could DH. But I haven't gotten any phone calls, but I'm certainly willing to uh, to look at that. I can make a lot more money hitting baseballs on a baseball field than than being a member of Congress. So uh, that would be oh, fun. That's great. I have to know though. So like, you know, we're over here watching you hit home runs. We're seeing, you know, catchers getting mowed down. How civil really is this game? Do you guys have trash talk? Do you guys talk shop? Are we discussing policies? Uh, you know, is the catcher talking to the batter when you get up there? How, what is like the environment there? It, it is collegial. Uh, we're certainly not talking shop or politics. Um, it, it, I will say it's collegial, but it also is kind of, you know, it's obviously there's a lot of rivalry. You got the Republicans and the Democrats. The The stadium is awesome. Last year was almost 30,000 people in that stadium. And literally it is split in two. Half the stadium is red Republican. The other half is uh, Democrat and blue. And so it's kind of it's kind of fun to play in an environment where half the stadium hates you and half the stadium is 
all in for you. It's a lot of fun, but there is some collegiality and I've gotten to know some of the Democrat players really well. And you actually get to know your Republican colleagues very well, waking up at 4.30 in the morning, being on a baseball field at 5.45 every morning, you're in DC getting ready for the game. I love that. Probably gives you guys some really good camaraderie as well. Maybe uh, you can make some friends even uh, in Congress. Let's come baseball. together. Yes. <laughs> That's what we need. We need more come together, especially on the Republican side. Uh, a couple of the things I wanted to talk about with the baseball game. I heard the climate protesters were going to be target targeting this game. What are some of your thoughts on that? Yeah, they did this last year. They they talk a big talk. They because of the level of security and in, in past history, like the, the year I hit the home run, Joe Biden was there. Um, so like they shut down all of the blocks around the the stadium. Um, they, they tried to like lay down and stop traffic. You're not going to be able to do that. They got into the game last year and then dropped a bunch of huge banners. And then, you know, within like five minutes, uh, Capitol Police and local law enforcement are on top of that. So they will certainly try something. Uh, we got warned last year that if somebody tries to get onto the field, just let law enforcement deal with it. But um, it, they, they talk a big talk. I, I've never really seen anything significant there. There's so much security for the game because you've got, some years it's been the president, some years it's been the vice president. You got tons of members of Congress there. Uh, so the level of security makes it very difficult for somebody to pull something off to stop it. Scotty, any final questions for the congressman? Yes, I got to say this because of Disney. We want to talk about Disney just being in Florida. I, I, I'm a big Disney fan, Congressman. I, I'm more of a Disney World fan than a Disneyland fan because I'm from the Midwest. I used to take I-75 down to Sarasota, by the way, with mommy and daddy. And we used to go to Disney. Any thoughts on what's going on with Disney these days? I mean, they get in the news, they get out of the news, they get Bob Iger back, then he's leaving again or what have you. Um, any thoughts on Disney down there, Congressman? Yeah, it's kind of quiet in, in Disney World right now. Uh, you haven't seen a lot of the Ron DeSantis Disney World going back and forth between the legislature and them. So they probably enjoy the fact that they're not being uh, they're not in the, the, the scope, in the, if you will, the focus of things going on right now. I haven't had a lot of communication with them as of recently in the last couple of years, but um, I think I, I think the rivalry between the state legislature and Disney World has kind of softened. Maybe it's with the new CEO. We'll see. Maybe. It's a small world after all anyway, right? It is a small world after all, <laughs> it, especially you know in what? politics. <laughs> they have been in the news. They're getting rid of Splash Mountain. One of the only things that I would actually go to Disney World for, uh, I think, Disney still is uh, making some mistakes, even though they've kind of backed off here in the state of Florida. Congressman, we appreciate you taking time out this morning. It has been an absolute treat. Again, thank you to Representative Stubbe. Good luck in tomorrow's big game against the Democrats. You guys can watch the congressional baseball game on FS1 and C-SPAN, of course. I'll tell you, Cal, you know, it's so funny about um, talking with, with Congressman about everything politics everything sports. I mean, what a great guest to just go everywhere in, in, in the kind of scope of uh, scope of things. And when we talk about Splash Mountain, you talked about Disney getting rid of Splash Mountain. I, I'm, I'm heartbroken about that, number one, because I love Splash Mountain. There's some controversy with why they're getting rid of it. But certainly, too, how about Action Park? I mean, back in the day, they got rid of Action Park out of New Jersey. That was a big heartbreaker. Many of the East Coasters remember that one. Um, Action Park was something, boys and girls, if you have not looked up Action Park from the 80s, uh, look it up because it'll freak you out. And I'll tell you why ride, uh, riding uh, say roller coasters and riding some water slides these days is way better. Even the stuff at Splash Mountain is way better than what was available to us back in the 80s. And speaking of things that feel like um, back in the 80s, feel like things that are kind of exciting as far as the 80s type of excitement was, um, how, about, how about Dan Hurley? How about Dan Hurley, Kel, at UConn? Um, top of the mountain, the zenith, the acme of his career, a back-to-back -back championships at UConn, especially this last run that he had in the NCAA tournament, just blew out every possible opponent by 20-plus. It seemed like maybe more, actually. I think he blew out a couple by 30-plus. Dan Hurley, uh, Kel, was being courted pretty heavily by the Lakers organization, as you know. And LeBron and all those guys were like, hey, come out here. Be a part of our team. We want you to be a coach. We're going to give you a massive, massive increase in salary as far as what you're going to be paid as a coach here versus UConn. It seemed, Kelly, like he danced around the idea. It seemed like he was going to be into it. It seemed like it actually might happen over the weekend. And all of a sudden, we get word that Hurley is out on that suggestion. He's going to stay at UConn. He's going to stay in the beautiful area of Stores, Connecticut, and dis-LA because of what? Maybe the traffic. Maybe the crime. 
uh, maybe the slums that are going on out there, maybe the taxes, of course, and maybe just the fact that he wants to stay home with his wife and kids versus go out to L.A. and take on that big uh, heralded career that was waiting for him with the Lakers. Yeah, I'm sure there was a lot of factors as to why he didn't want to go to L.A. Obviously, the money's nice, but you're... It, yeah, I would call him an economist, but close enough. I mean, look, we're talking at a, a 54% relative tax rate to live in California. So even if you got double the raise, most of it is not going in your pocket. But I think the real story here is loyalty. And I tweeted this yesterday, Scotty, and I said, we don't see this much anymore. And I think it's so important to show your loyalty to whether your employer, to your fan base, in the world of NIL and college basketball to all of these other factors that we see in our world, loyalty has just been pushed to the wayside. It's chasing that almighty dollar, getting that name recognition, whatever it is. And I think Hurley drew a nice line in the sand, told his players, I'm staying. I want a three-peat, which we can get to in here in a minute because I think it's very, very feasible that they do. And I think he should be commended for it. Well, let's talk about loyalty, too. I mean, somebody that, that speaks loyalty to me, and I don't know how the other WNBA players will feel about this. You know, I feel was kind of loyal, and this is mainly through the NCAA uh, women's situation, was Caitlin Clark, loyal to Iowa, loyal to a lot of her, her, her kind of druthers when it came to not taking some of those endorsements and things like that, just going right from Iowa to play for the Fever. Um, Kel, we've got some sound here to play for Caitlin and her take on Dan Hurley. Uh, given that you are a huge basketball fan and we are located in Connecticut right now, the big basketball news today was Dan Hurley not going to the Lakers and staying with UConn with college basketball. What does that mean for college basketball and just for basketball in general? I mean, shoot, two really good options. He could have, you know, I mean, he had his choice. I mean, obviously, I have no idea what the conversations were, but um, I really admire him. I, I love his intensity. I think. The way he coaches the game is amazing. The way he coaches his players is amazing and holds them accountable um, and really gets the most out of them. I've really loved watching them over the course of the last couple of years. And uh, I think it's cool he's staying in college basketball. I think he really loves it. And I think he loves being around being around um, those young men. And um, obviously he makes them great. So I've been a big fan of his and big fan of his program. Um, and they've been fun to watch. Shout out to Dan Z from Outkick for that interview. Scotty, hey, I agree with Caitlin. Dan Hurley's good for college basketball. We need more Dan Hurleys of the world. We need more guys that aren't just quick to leave their program with a little bit of success. Uh, I kind of miss those blue blood days where it was a coach was at a university for 20 plus years. They put in the work. They won multiple national championships or had multiple appearances in the tournament. What are your thoughts on, uh, on Caitlin in college basketball, because I thought, man, I tweeted, I said, she should have stayed. She should have stayed one more year. She was going to money anyway. She was. And that was the thing, too, about loyalty is, though, she did do a lot for the school. And she was obviously tried and true Iowa. And that's the thing, too. You're right. I mean, Caitlin knows NCAA basketball. So I agree with her take. I agree with her take, too. I mean, gone are the days, Kelly, when you think about a team <clears throat> and you think about their coach, maybe first or second. I mean, Jerry Tarkanian was one that I think about a lot when I think about the UNLV days, thinking of Kelly in Vegas, and you think about a team that was so heralded because of who they had behind the bench or on the bench. And so one of those things, too, I think, is that they, this maybe is one thing that does set off uh, that trend where maybe some of these coaches will stick around. But unfortunately, as we know about today's environment, because of taxes, because of regulation, because of yada, 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 everybody's chasing the almighty dollar. So that's something, too, that coaches are probably thinking about when they make these decisions to stay or go. I'm with you. Uh, we got a few minutes left, so I wanted to touch on one more topic. Adam Silver says Seattle, Las Vegas, or Mexico City wow. could possibly get an NBA team. Now, I moved to Vegas in 2007. I had to think about that for a second. And yeah. that was the year they had the All-Star game. And since the All-Star weekend in Las Vegas, they have been saying, we're getting an NBA team. That was a while ago. Now, since then, they've got an NHL team. They've now gotten the Las Vegas Raiders. And, oh, by the way, looks like the Oakland A's are coming to town as well. Batter up. I, if you would have asked me, I would have made the NBA a favorite to be in Las Vegas before all of those. So it only seems fitting for them to kind of get that uh, superfecta, if you will, of all four teams. But tell me your thoughts on maybe the Seattle Supersonics returning. You know, oh. uh, those are now called the uh, Oklahoma City Thunder. And, and I'm sure Seattle's been kind of missing them a little bit. But I do just feel like of all three of those cities, Las Vegas has got to be number one on the NBA's list. 
It is. And Kelly, back in 07, you were an all-star as well, just so you know, even though uh, we maybe didn't know that just yet. And I'll tell you what, uh, Seattle's also, they are missing the WNBA, or the NBA, of course. They have the WNBA. My, my gal Sue Bird plays for the Storm or did. Um, but they probably are missing the Seattle Supersonics. They're missing some uh, probably police enforcement too, by the way, it seems like. But hey, that could be something that might keep them away from having some sort of a uh, first line when it comes to the to the games. But I mean, Seattle Supersonics would be great to bring back. I mean, who can't forget? Uh, who can forget rather, but you can't forget, obviously, is Gary Payton, Sean Kemp, Dale Ellis, some of those guys, amazing job. Um, Detlas Shrimp played on there too, very good player. So Seattle would be great to bring back. Mexico City is very interesting, Bell. How about that one? I mean, we do already have a Toronto, Toronto Raptor uh, team that's kind of so-so. I mean, Vince Carter up there was amazing. Amari Stoudemire was killer. Stefan Marbury, I think, was up there for a bit. Um, so Mexico City is very interesting because just like you, Kel, um, back in 2008, I thought about moving to Mexico City. Changed my mind as you moved to Vegas and made that move. I stayed in Chicago instead. But hey, uh, Mexico City would actually be an interesting one to bring on as we kind of go to this whole global thing. I mean, look what's been going on with the Mets Phillies game this last weekend in London, which was a terrible game until the ninth inning anyway. I mean, you want to talk about ruining baseball around the world? Go put the Mets and Phillies in London like they did this past weekend. Touche. We do have uh, the audio really quickly, though, from Adam Silver. Just to kind of wrap things up on today's show. Let's see who he thinks is the front runner to get a new NBA team. Can you give us a sneak peek? Just what will be the potential? Like, okay, it's these, 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 and these, and these. And I can could, I could pick up the tea leaves. Well, there's been some discussion about going back to Seattle, potentially. <laughs> Las Vegas, no doubt, is very Hello. interested in the team. <laughs> Mexico City one day. One but day. there's okay. lots of other U.S. cities and Canadian cities, frankly, that have reached out to us to tell us they'd be interested. Right lots of other cities in addition to those three. We're going to see who gets the expansion team. Make sure you guys are following Scotty and I on social media at Kelly in Vegas, at Scotty Markets. Be sure to hit that subscribe button so you do not miss a minute of OutKick in the Morning. Also, please drop a like or comment. You like today's show, you hate today's show, you have an idea for an upcoming episode, don't forget to turn on your alerts so you also know when we are streaming live. Thank you to my co-host, Scott Martin. Thank you to all of you at home, hanging out, watching with us. Thank you to Congressman Greg Stubbe. We will see everyone back here for another great show tomorrow morning. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. As you know, the woke sports media is in shambles and OutKick is on top. So make sure you're tuning into my show, OutKick the Morning, for your fill of sports, pop culture, politics, and everything in between. For more original content, make sure you're clicking here. And also make sure you're subscribing by clicking here. Everybody, thanks for watching. Catch more later.